What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about some tips for making working in Profile Builder even better. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So just a quick note, Profile Builder, as well as the BIM bundle, which is the combination of Profile Builder and Quantifier Pro are on sale. Um, through the end of this week using this code right here. So if you have been taking a look at Profile Builder, this might be a good time to check that out. Um, I'll link to that in the notes down below. All right, so um, I'll link to some more detailed tutorials on how Profile Builder works. I wanted to just hammer on some quick, uh, quick tips that make using it faster and better. So first off, when you're working with your profiles, right? Remember that you have the ability to set your insertion point by adjusting this option right here. So for example, let's say that right now I was to drop my object on this path, right? So I'm just going to click in order to drop that in here. The problem is this is getting dropped at the bottom of the path and we want it to be dropped on top. Well, the problem is we set this at the wrong insertion point, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the insertion point just by coming in here and setting this instead of to the top middle, we wanna set it to the bottom middle. So that is going to adjust where this is in our, uh, in our model. It's going to place it based on this bottom point instead of the top point. So second thing about this, remember that once you make a change to a profile or an assembly, there's a button right here for edit member properties where you can actually click on this. And let's say for example, we adjusted the object placement point. What this is gonna do is this is gonna allow us to apply any edits we made just by clicking on the edit button. And you do wanna make sure that you actually have that profile member selected. But now if we come in here and we click on edit, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to adjust this object so that now it's placed with the insertion point on top of the line instead of on the bottom. So tip one, adjust insertion points. Tip two, you can actually make adjustments and then apply them using the member properties right here. All right, so next up, we have the stamp profile button. This one is helpful to me because say that I wanted to create a custom copy of a profile in my scene, um, what I could do is I can stamp a flat version of this and then I can make a copy of it over here. And I'm just gonna right click on this and make it a unique component right here. But now what I've got is I've got this one profile which I can apply, right? And I'm gonna go ahead and do a bottom middle real quick, but I can apply that to this object right here, right? So I can build that along the path. But what I wanna do is I also wanna create a custom profile over here, All right? And so let's say we wanted to simplify this and just draw a line in here and just have a profile that looks more like this. Okay, and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna explode this, but then I'm gonna click in here and I'm gonna add a new handrail. And so let's say I was to click in here and add a new profile like this, um, I could use that one as a basis, right? But then I could just come in here and do the next tip, which is swap this out, right? Because right now we've applied this to this path. And what I wanna do is I wanna swap it out. Well, the way that we can do that is with this selected, we can just click in here and we can actually set all and click on edit. And what that's gonna do is that's going to replace the profile that we had in here with the one that's currently active. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna give us the ability to swap things out really quickly. All right, so next up, we've got the auto assembly function. What the auto assembly function can do is it can actually help you automatically set up a profile. So let's say that I was to set up a handrail that looks something like this. It's going to actually recognize the components. So we're gonna call this post. And then we're gonna add a quick profile in here. So just a little rectangle, something like this. So maybe two and a half by a half inch, something like that. It's gonna be really small, but we're gonna take this profile and we're going to add a new one and we're just gonna call this a slap right here. And real quick, let's add some verticals. So I'm gonna make a copy and we'll say this goes every six feet. So something like this, and then I'm gonna apply a slap to it like this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this so that it has a 45 degree rotation we can go ahead and adjust that right here. And then I'm just gonna move this so that it's centered on this object. And we'll just make some copies of it. And so basically what we're doing is we're just setting our fence up, right? So I'm gonna type in like divided by 10, divided by 12, we'll say 14. And so we'll go ahead and call this good for right now, but because I've built this along the red axis, 
right here. And I'm going to move this out of the way, but we can actually select this object and inside of the assembly function, we can do an auto assemble. And so what that's going to do is that's going to recognize what we've placed in here and it's actually going to automatically generate an assembly in here. So now I have an assembly. that can automatically generate this. And you can come in here and you can adjust things like the profile members, for example, and uh, how it handles corners and other things like that. We're not gonna worry too much about that for right now, but just notice how you can use auto assemble to really quickly generate assemblies in Profile Builder. And so next up, we've got a tool which I think could be just a helpful standalone. It's a smart path selection tool. And so what this tool does is it actually helps you quickly select objects along a path like this. So instead of me having to come in here and just like manually do this, notice how I can move my mouse and it's highlighting an area where if I click, it's going to finalize that highlight like this. So this is especially helpful for when you're dealing with things like sandboxes or other things like that. And you need to select a tool right here. You can hit the enter key in order to finalize that selection. I use this tool all the time. All right, so next up, we've got the hole cutter tool, which does exactly what it sounds like. It lets you set the size of a hole. So let's say I want this to be, uh, we'll call it seven foot high, three feet wide. I can click on an object, maybe three foot by seven foot right here. And then you can set your central point like this but you can use this in order to cut holes in objects. Note that you can also use this to create openings inside of profile members, though I've created one that's kind of hard with the inferencing right here. So you can also use this to cut holes inside of assemblies that you've generated as well. All right, so one thing that can be kind of frustrating is if you try to use the regular follow me tool, you can only create copies of things along paths, right? Like continuous paths. So for something like this one, for example, you could only generate something that follows along a path or along a path, but you couldn't generate it along the whole thing. Um, profile Builder, on the other hand, allows you to generate profiles everywhere. So notice how it takes this whole thing and um, it generates profiles everywhere in here. So if you had like a full grid or something like that, so let's say, we'll just do something really simple this, you could just select all these faces and you could generate profiles on all of those really quickly using this tool. All right, so let's say you wanted to make a change to this profile for whatever reason. So let's say we wanted to make this a C channel instead of an I beam. Not sure why you would do that, but let's say we wanted to. Um, you could come in here and select a new profile if you have it. Um, we currently don't though. What, can, what you can do instead is there's an option in here if I double click on a profile member, I can actually click on the button right here to edit that profile. That's gonna take you in a vertical view like this one and you can actually come in here and you can change the profile. So I can just draw along this, like this. Let's say we don't want any of this anymore. So we're just gonna get rid of all of it, like this. Then if we click out of it, it's gonna ask if we wanna update that for all members with that name, we're gonna say yes. But notice what that does is that comes in here and everywhere we had that in here, that adjusts the profile to the new profile that we have in here. So we also have a built-in trim function, right? Because notice when we made this change, now we've got this overlap over here. Well, instead of coming in here and changing your paths, you can just use the function here for trim to face. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna allow you to select the face that you're gonna trim to, which in this case is going to be this face right here. And then it's gonna tell you which, or ask you which profile member you wanna trim from. We're gonna click on this one right here. Well, notice how it uses that other profile to trim this like this. So massively helpful if you need to go in here and make a quick adjustment without changing the path. And then let's say that you've generated a profile that goes along a path like this one and you wanna change the direction of the path. Well, you can actually do that by selecting your profile member and clicking on the option for path mode. What that's gonna do is that's gonna take this object and it's gonna put you into path mode where you can actually adjust this path. And so what you can do, right, is with this selected, you can click on this option right here and we wanna double click into this, but then we wanna click on the option to adjust the path. So it finds our path right here, right? And we actually wanna make a change. So let's say we actually want this to go this way and this way, and we don't want it to go over here. Well, you can make this adjustment and then click. Well, notice how now, if we go back out of path mode, like this, 
the location of our extrusion has actually been changed. So you can actually edit those paths after the fact directly inside a profile builder. All right, so then remember that with the follow me tool, you can't extrude something unless it has a thickness, right? But a lot of the time you wanna indicate things like vapor barriers or other things like that that don't really have much thickness. And so what we could do is we could take this profile, we could call it flat profile. Notice how this actually generates a profile based on that. Well, the cool thing about this is now we can select this and we can actually extrude using that tool. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna mirror this and then adjust it. So we're gonna click right here in order to do that. Now it's facing outward, but notice how now I'm able to extrude a profile based on this point and you can adjust that point to wherever you want it to be, right? You could have it be your center left or your center right. But if we adjust this, notice how we can generate something with no thickness um, that does generate faces in here using Profile Builder. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Remember, Profile Builder is on sale through the end of this week, so this might be a good time to check it out. But leave a comment below. Let me know what you thought. Do you have any other Profile Builder tips? I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.